Multivariate functions are all around you. Just look and you will see. Here's a simple example from basic economics, looking at a market equilibrium. Let's say that we use P to denote the price of a certain object, an object that is supplied according to some supply curve, in this case a straight line, S0 plus AP, there is a corresponding demand curve, which we'll also model as a straight line, D0 minus B times P. Now these are set up so that the supply line has positive slope, the demand line has negative slope, and that makes sense for economic reasons. These two lines are going to intersect somewhere. This is the market equilibrium, and it occurs at a certain price, P sub M, the market price, and at a certain quantity, Q sub M, the market quantity. Now, what you might be interested in is how do these market prices, market quantities, vary with a change in the model? If I change those constants that went into the supply and demand curves, how would we figure that out? Okay, well first, let's reduce this down to a function. If I set the supply and demand functions equal to each other, and then solve for the market price, solve for P sub M, then what I can do, move all the P sub M's over to the left hand side, factor out an A plus B, and divide by that, to get P sub M equals D naught minus S naught divided by A plus B. Then, substituting that into the formula for the market quantity, Q sub M, I can do a little bit of algebra and rearrangement and get that Q sub M is equal to A times D naught plus B times S naught divided by A plus B. So in the end, what I get is the market price and the market quantity as a function of these four variables of A, B, S naught, and D naught. Now that's an interesting function for inputs to outputs. If you have a more interesting economic model, you're gonna have a lot more inputs and outputs. All right, let's switch gears, talk a little bit about disease. Let's look at some simple differential equations that model how an infection spreads through a population. This is called the SEIR model, and it's pretty simple. There are four population cohorts, SEIR. They all vary with time. S is susceptible, E is exposed, I is infected, and R is recovered. Now, the SEIR model is a model for how these evolve over time. This uses differential equations and says that ds dt, de dt, di dt, and dr dt are all some function of the population sizes, s, e, i, and r. Now this function looks kind of complicated, but that's because it involves various positive constants alpha, beta, gamma, and mu. These are rates, say rates of infection, rates of recovery, uh, things like that. Now, I don't really care about the details of the model as much as I care about the fact that it has four inputs and four outputs. And this is one of the simplest models in epidemiology. There are much more complicated models out there that have more inputs and outputs. Other examples of functions with lots of inputs and outputs are inspired by robotics. We've looked at the robot arm before and the kinematic map that has all the joint angles as inputs and let's say this time has six outputs representing both the position and the orientation of the object. Now, if you move on to statistics, data, machine learning, anything like that, oh wow, now you're talking about functions with, oh, so many inputs and so many outputs, depending on what you're trying to do. There are so many interesting high-dimensional functions out there.